Oh god, no, 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 no. Chris, Chris, don't, don't do this to me, Chris. It looks like one of our development parts didn't fare too well in testing. Oh, for crying out loud. We're gonna have to go back now and make some adjustments in order to get the final numbers looking more like we were expecting from the simulation. Hey, what's going on, guys? Over here, and welcome back to my F1 2017 career mode, episode number 43 today for the Bahrain Grand Prix in season three. And you can see we started off with some pretty annoying news. Our first actual upgrade of this season, of course, we have done three before going to the Australian Grand Prix, but this was our first purchased upgrade from this season's kind of uh, R&D progress, if you will, and the earnings from qualifying in the race in the first two rounds. And unfortunately, it has failed straight away. Um, so I guess I hope this is not maybe a things. A sign of things to come because if this is the way it's going to be this may be quite a frustrating uh, next couple of races ready for us so we're gonna have to spend an extra 500 then to basically fix this this was a drag update so it would have come in hand here at Bahrain because generally speaking I'm gonna be running probably a little bit higher wings than I want to so that drag reduction would have come quite in handy to try and help in a straight line uh, especially you know if I'm running higher wings on the rear wing and this part failure moreover is gonna kind of affect our entire plan or my entire plan of what I wanted to do for the next few episodes with R&D I wanted to kind of develop more down this aerodynamic path. You can see the next upgrade along is a major upgrade, which costs 1,500 points. But now we have to spend 500, of course, to fix that part. So we're basically, well, we're not at square one, but we're near enough there. We've only got a couple, uh, I think like 60 points or so, or something like that. So now we have to try and earn back those 500 before we even think about earning the next 1,000 to then purchase that major upgrade, which would have been quite helpful, uh, especially because that would have probably come in, you know, if I earn that probably for the end of this episode or next episode, that may have come in four weeks development probably just around the time of the Canadian Grand Prix or the Azerbaijan Grand Prix so that would have come in really hand quite handy but now that's going to get delayed so I don't even know when that upgrade would come in unfortunately so well I mean them's the breaks I mean that that's kind of part and parcel of the career mode so we just have to take it on the chin and obviously we can't do anything else but do that so went and did the practice programs obviously FP1 was a little bit pointless but you saw there that we did the track timeization in FP1 and then the rest of the programs in the other sessions but we moved swiftly into qualifying here. We're on our Q1 lap time at the moment. Now, I would say this would be a very easy affair for us, but around Bahrain, as I mentioned at the end of last episode yesterday, if you didn't see it, by the way, be sure to go check that one out before you continue on with this one, episode 42 at the Chinese Grand Prix. I said at the end of that one, you know, at least for me, uh, you know, I'm just not that great at Bahrain on this game and add that into the AI seems to be a little bit better at Bahrain compared to maybe other circuits. There definitely is a bit of undulation in how the AI perform and you saw there we only just about made it into Q2 by the skin of our teeth there in P15. So we have to do better in Q2 if we want to actually progress to the top 10. You can see there I set one lap time already in Q2 on the set of super soft tires and I'm going out for a second lap on the super soft tires and these are the fastest tires available this weekend. I'm not trying out this strategy of perhaps putting on the set of soft tires for Q2. I just don't have the pace. This is the first time where genuinely I, there's even no point even trying it because I knew I didn't have the pace. We're down in P15 at the moment as I'm on my second flying lap. You can see though we've gained quite a bit of time there in sector one so definitely losing a lot of time around this circuit and I'm yet to really figure out and nail it down of where exactly I'm losing time of course you know just carrying on with the career mode every single day there's hardly enough time to really practice uh, one specific circuit to find out where I'm weakest at around this circuit so we come across the line it is P10 so that was quite promising I was quite kind of happy that oh we could just about squeeze in but then unfortunately as we move on to the end of the timesheet we're in P11 you can see again skin of the teeth stuff there to just miss out to Sergio Perez and Hulkenberg does make it in uh, for a pretty good P8 there. Obviously, we'll have to see how that ends up after the actual top 10 shootout, but um, I really am not feeling too confident about this race in terms of both our drives today and in terms of the strategy as well, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. The one stop really isn't available here. The smallest stops we can do is two stops, so uh, just like the previous two seasons of this career mode, uh, this Bahrain Grand Prix may be quite a struggle and basically a damage limitation for us. And speaking about the top 10 earlier, let's see the full grid then before we get into this race. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Kimi Raikkonen completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Bottas, Daniel Ricciardo, and Massa, Verstappen, Grosjean, Perez, and Nico Hülkenberg, a Renault, Ocon, Daniel Kvyat, and Sainz, Magnussen, Stroll, Pascal Wehrlein, and Fernando Alonso. Van Dorn and Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. 
So looking at our race strategy ahead of the race, as I mentioned just earlier, the two stop is going to be the minimum amount of uh, pit stops we can make this afternoon. And we're going very multicolored. We're going to go super soft, soft and medium. We're going to stick with this default order. I believe in season two, I basically uh, reversed the order of the soft and medium. But this time, I think I'm going to just use all the softest tires available to me as we go on and finish off on the mediums like most of the AI will. Hulkenberg didn't do a great job. Only qualified in P10, just one slot ahead of us. So, so that kind of feeds into my lack of confidence about how we're going to do this afternoon. But, you know, we're just going to have to try our best and uh, try and fight as hard as we can out there as we go to five red lights then for the Bahrain Grand Prix, the third round of season three. Five red lights are out and we're underway and it is a good start for myself and Nika Hulkenberg there. A little bit of wheel spin in third gear, but we're up into Rich Mix immediately to try and go to the inside of turn one. Esteban Ocon on my inside even further then and both of us make a diving move into, into turn one. Very, very close up with Massa and the Haas car. We went four wide there momentarily, I think that was, as the Haas cuts across to Turn two, and we just about squeeze them out there, and we're up. We're up into P8 though, so it's been a great, great start for us. And also, Esteban Ocon there, who tried to make up a few positions with us. We dive it down the inside of Felipe Massa, trying to catch him napping as the two Red Bull guys go side by side. Verstappen just ahead of Daniel Ricciardo for now, and it looks like up ahead it's a bit of a checking ball between the Ferrari cars and Mercedes. We slot in behind, couldn't make that move work on Massa, so we're gonna have to stay behind for P8 for now. And as we go into the last corner, the sun hits our eyes a little bit with the sun glare. We can see Massa getting away. Good traction for him. Lewis Hamilton at the moment leading the race as he sets the pass after the Grand Prix. And Massa up ahead of me, though, making a move on Daniel Ricciardo. Very crucial. So the Red Bull cars not having too much straight line speed. And the Williams going well, or at least uh, Massa's Williams. I think uh, Stroll's a little bit down the order. You can see Ricciardo being well and truly squeezed out. He's been put off quite a bit there in turn two. So we've got a great run off that corner. On the left-hand side, Ricciardo doesn't give us much room to work with. But we make it work anyway and kind of force our way through on the curbing. And we're up the order into P7. And so Ricciardo is now maybe under pressure from that uh, Haas car. I can't quite tell which one it is. And then Espan Ocon in the Force India, who's made a great start with us. And we both managed to jump our respective teammates there, Sergio Perez and Nico Hulkenberg. So we're into P7. It would have been best of the rest, I would have said, unless, apart from Felipe Massa being there up in P6 ahead of us. And indeed, he actually continues on to, uh, by the time we get to the end of lap four, to overtake the next Red Bull ahead of him. You can see in the top left, there is Verstappen now in P6. So Massa going really quite well here in this race, using the Mercedes engine in the back of his car to really good use and showing the engine power is, uh, is going to mean a lot around this circuit as it has done for the last two seasons of career mode and now you can see Grosjean down my inside and Otto Ocon trying it as well he had the slipstream of the Frenchman and the Frenchman had the slipstream of me as we go side by side through turn two very close stuff there as we bang tyres indeed and the hand of anger goes up on the right hand side I'm trying to aggressively kind of squeeze Grosjean towards the right but he's having actually none of it he sticks to his line so fair play to him and so much so that we make a little bit of contact there and Grosjean basically just shoves me off the road a little bit, not off the road, off the racing line I should say and uh, basically just has no argument, he, he wanted that place and he got it, fair and square up into P P6 so fair enough there, I mean sometimes we've seen the AI being a little bit timid so nice to see they're being a bit aggressive at the moment in this Grand Prix and so now as we move across onto lap 6, Esban Ocon has made a move on the left hand side with DRS, we're going to try and get the place back if we can, dart it down the inside lock up very very badly on the right tyre allows Esteban to get the switchback move on us basically and a really nice one indeed and he's able to get us and we just can't have the traction to actually uh, stay right up his gearbox through turn two on the exit and you can see looking back behind us a little bit worried of where Daniel Ricciardo is in all of this and as we move on to lap seven last minute uh, kind of we uh, think about coming into the pits I was maybe going to continue on for one more lap to chase after Ocon and stay in his DRS but the pace just didn't seem to be there so we're going to come in right now for what will be the set of soft tyres so as we mentioned we're not going to switch it round the thinking behind that is looking back at season two I just felt like we lost too much time in this middle stint being on the medium tyres whereas most people are going to put on the soft tyres and so that's my thinking for this season let's just try stick with what everyone else is basically doing and basically just kind of follow their uh, copy their strategies essentially and are uh, hopefully not making any mistakes in doing so and that's going to be the best bet as we come out just ahead of Nico Hulkenberg there very close he's on another set of super soft tyres he's already made one pit stop so that will allude to us that he's making a two uh, three stop work indeed because we're doing the two stop which is the minimum that we can do this afternoon so Hulkenberg actually gets past us and we kind of make it very very easy for him to be fair into the last corner going very easy on the brakes lifting and coasting there because he's on the three stop so I wanted to give him a chance to maybe get ahead of me and overtake some cars and be aggressive because he's on the other strategy the more aggressive strategy so I don't want to hold him up and also at the same time as I've mentioned a few times before 
generally, um, sometimes I drive a lot better when I'm following my teammate or just other cars. So I thought that may be the case here. Maybe I could actually speed up and improve my lap times. But although, also saying that at the same time, you could see clearly into turn one, Hulkenberg had some sort of issue locked up and I had to brake check myself. And that was a bit annoying to watch in terms of we've already probably lost a bit of time in hindsight uh, letting Hulkenberg through. But you can see there's a whole heap of cars ahead of us there. I think the two McLarens are effectively going long in this Grand Prix. So they've got all of us to contend with. And effectively, even though there are no blue flags, we're essentially kind of just getting past slower cars that aren't in the same race as us effectively. But there are no blue flags, as I said, to help us out. So that's a bit unfortunate. The McLarens can defend as best they can there. You can see Van Dorn just ahead of Esteban Ocon. I think it's Alonso who's just ahead of Daniel Ricciardo there, who's jumped us as well. He was behind us, but obviously with the pace of the Red Bull car, you would imagine he would be jumping us in this race so far. But you can see Ocon goes down the inside as we climb up the hill. That's going to slow both of them down as well as Hulkenberg. So let's see what we can do as they all really slow down through this right hand. So we can see the momentum gaining here. We dive it down the inside of both those cars there. Very close stuff with Esteban Ocon. We shove him a little bit off circuit there and we go wheel to wheel as you can see up ahead Perez trying to navigate Fernando Alonso along with Daniel Ricciardo as we're side by side as well as my teammate on the Toro Rosso as well. We're down the inside of Ocon there. We're going to go wide a little bit that should help us out to get the traction and also might help Hulkenberg out as well I was also thinking about that. If we could try and force Esteban uh, wide, that may help Nico trying to overtake him as well. You know, play a bit of teamwork here, a bit of team tactics at Bahrain you know, we're not very fast here. There's the two Renaults so we need to kind of use anything we can to our advantage. So we go down the inside of turn one to keep P12 for now. And you can see behind us, Ocon uh, slots in. So unfortunately, my uh, plan hasn't quite worked there. And so we're going to have to just forget about Hulkenberg for now and focus on the car ahead of us, which is Stoffel Van Dorn in the McLaren car. And we close quite rapidly indeed into sector two. But you can see as we move on into the S section, we can't just quite have that. We don't just don't have the pace to quite make a move down the inside. We have to stick behind him for the initial part of the S section. The second half of it, we get a really good exit. And we're going to try it around the outside. But Van Dorn puts up a decent in fight. We try this switch back, but Van Dorn does really well to park the bus. And I don't know if this is intentional, but he's really making life hard for us. We go down the inside in a, what is a very, very tricky corner anyway, but side by side even more so. And Van Dorn is still there round the outside, and only now do we get him very frustrating stuff for us to see in the cockpit of this Renault car. I was very pissed off of Van Dorn at the time because that was just so much time we lost that we didn't need to lose. And now Ocon sent it down the inside. I've gone uh, bro broke a little bit early to make the switchback move work. He's locked up. We've straightened up the car a little bit earlier and now we've got in his slipstream. No DRS for some reason and Ocon hasn't got DRS himself. So I don't know what quite one, uh, what went on there for the FIA. I think maybe a glitch in the system is none of us got the aid of the drag reduction. But we go down the inside anyway. We go really quite wide you can see to squeeze Ocon out. I, I'm being very aggressive in this Grand Prix because I just know this car well, and, and more importantly I do not have this uh, do not have the pace for this race at the moment so I need to be very very aggressive and there's going to be basically no love lost between any of us and that's going to continue as we move on to lap 12 for the Toro Rosso in the slipstream. He's going to move to the right hand side there. Daniel Kvyat as our teammates in the pit so Hulkenberg makes a bit of an earlier pit stop. Uh, Kvyat goes to the inside. We go even more to the inside there but it's a bit too extreme for us as we go a little bit wide and lock up and go deep into that corner that allows the Russian to go around the outside into turn two on the exit we go very close and then maybe a little bit of contact was made there on the front right tire and once again just like I did to Grosjean earlier trying to squeeze Daniel out and this time it works out for a little bit a little bit for us because uh, he's kind of scared into breaking a little bit early compared to us and we're able to shoot it uh, on the left hand side to keep P9 for now and you can see though the gap to Perez is quite large so pretty much I am fighting for P9, I think, at maximum. I think if we get any higher, it'll be a very, very good Grand Prix. I think I'll call it a success if we get any higher than P9. As we move on to lap 13, unfortunately, it may only be P10 because the Ocon gets us very easily and he's got so much overspeed going to the brake zone of turn one. I just didn't have any answer. I couldn't even uh, kind of fathom maybe breaking later and making a dive bomb move on him to try and re-overtake him into turn one. But then saying that, going to sector two, he locks up very badly on the front right tyre and we've got an opportunity here as we can maybe squeeze it down the inside. Doesn't work out in the initial phase of the S section, but now on the second phase, just like we did to Van Dorn, maybe can we try and make a move this time to the inside rather than the outside of the McLaren like we tried earlier, but it's not going to work. We don't get the traction we needed there, and Ocon, just by the skin of his teeth, stays ahead for P9, but a scrap and a half is going on at the moment in his midfield uh, between myself and everyone uh, around me, basically, and it's not a fight I want to be in, to be honest, but it's one that we're stuck with 
And now we move later into lap 14. It's Grosjean with a very slow car there on that back straight. I would suggest that maybe looks like a puncher as he was still going uh, down the straight. So he's still moving. And as we move later to the next lap, lap 15, in the same exact place, more yellow flags. This time, though, it's for Kimi Raikkonen. And he's parked up. So for the second time in a row now in Season 3, Kimi Raikkonen is out of this Grand Prix. Very, very harsh luck there for the Finn. He was actually leading the Grand Prix. It's a, it was a 1-2 for Scuderia Ferrari, and uh, Kimi has to park up there. Very, very unfortunate for him. So, uh, Sebastian Vettel inherits the lead of the Grand Prix then. And uh, meanwhile, on to lap 17 as we look at that replay, it's now time for us to come in for our final pit stop of the afternoon onto a set of uh, medium tyres here. This will be, and we'll be going to the end of the Grand Prix. You can see the Toro Rosso of Danica Fiat also follows me in, so I suggest we'll probably be fighting him as well as, I would Imagine Esteban Ocon towards the end of this race. And so as we go down the pit lane then, just a little thought alter. It'll be interesting to see where Hulkenberg is in all of this. He was on the three-stop, of course. So I'm curious to see what the pace difference is on those two different strategies and which one is ultimately going to be the better one. For now, I think it may be me because I think Hulkenberg is down the road, uh, going down the main straight right now as we go through turn two there. As we move on to lap 20, you can see there is Hulkenberg making his final pit stop. And so he'll be down at least a couple of positions. And we're up into P9. So definitely, I think for now, we've chosen the right strategies. We're up into P9 now. And we're, for the first time since the first stint, we can now see Felipe Massa. I don't know how on earth Massa has fallen back this far because he was well and truly away from us. He was ahead of both Red Bull cars. But, but for some reason now, he's lost some amount of time. I don't know, maybe he converted to a three-stop. Whatever the case was, we're now really right up the back of him. And we may be able to make a diving move into turn one with eight laps to go. To get up into P8, this will be as we bang tires a little bit on the left-hand side. He's got the inside line, but he's cut across the corner a little bit on uh, turn two. So he may be lifting off a tad to maybe let some time through. As he definitely did cut across the curbing. But either way, we got a much better exit off turn two. So we've got so much more speed going into this next corner. Tricky stuff there with the curbing on the right. We need to squeeze. He's Master out a little bit on the left, but not too much there to force him off circuit. And we have done so. We gave him enough room for sure. And he had to just back out of that. But it's uh, no use because then onto the next lap, Massa comes right back at us with that speed he's got naturally in the Williams car and also DRS. And we move very heavily to the inside. Then we kind of fake him and we go to the left with a very nice long break zone pretty much. It kind of looked like I coasted across to the left-hand side of the circuit there. And Massa, I think, was probably looking in his mirrors on the right because he didn't see me coming. And we swooped right around the outside of him very easily to get back into P8. So that was a very nice defensive move there for us to re-overtake him. And now you can see Daniel Ricciardo making a late pit stop and that will be his third pit stop of the afternoon. Ricciardo looked like he was making a two-stop work, but he's coming in for a late call onto a three-stop. And I think this is maybe what Massa ended up doing. Uh, but he's just basically done the reverse. Massa's ended up on the set of medium tires, whereas Ricardo tried to stretch mediums initially, but it's had to be forced onto a set of super soft tires. And you can see we do overtake him as he comes down the pit lane. So we're up one free position then, effectively. I say free because I didn't really think Ricardo was going to be a car we're going to overtake in this race. And at the same time, we have to defend from Massa. And just like we did on Ocon, we go wide into the exit of turn one to squeeze him out. So we're going to keep P7, and we are indeed going to keep it till the end of this race. It's going to be Sebastian Vettel who takes the win of the Bahrain Grand Prix. So stops Lewis Hamilton getting momentum with three wins on the trot. It's only going to be two for him and Vettel gets the third uh, race win of this season as Aspen Ocon comes home in sixth place some way ahead of us and we have to settle for P7. I say settle, I'll take P7 because it really didn't look like we were going to get P7 uh, earlier on this race and as I mentioned, P9 would have been a, a good success for us I think. So I, I'll count this as a kind of triple success really. Um, yeah, I mean Bahrain every single time. At some point I want to try and kind of get to the bottom and my issue around this circuit, but I just don't have too much pace around Bahrain, and the AI pretty damn nifty around Bahrain, and also for some reason, every single time we come to this circuit, my car, the car I'm in, you know, the Taurus in Season 1 and then the Renault Season 2 and 3, for some reason, just loses pace compared to where it was in China and Australia. Um, I think it's a lot to do with the engine to be fair. It's, it is a, it definitely is a power circuit uh, with those long back, straight, uh, long back straight and main straight, and obviously, both times I've been in a Renault powered car, so maybe it is is the drag and obviously having no drag reduction upgrade for this race definitely hurt us because I was running very high wings. I think I was running 9.7 or 9.8 or maybe 8.7 so definitely very high here for Bahrain there to try and navigate the corners but either way it's been a pretty decent Grand Prix for us and I can't be too disheartened. Uh, obviously though we did lose second place in the instructors to Ferrari but uh, that in itself is a bit of an odd phrase to say. We're still ahead of Red Bull though so that's good to see and uh, all in all damage limitation successfully done here for the Bahrain Grand Prix and hopefully we can have a 
great one next time at the Russian Grand Prix. Of course, we went very well as a Team Renault in Season 2. So, guys, if you have enjoyed that episode, smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're interested, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been Ava. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your days, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.